The Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ reveals in Proverbs chapter 9. It says here, this is reading out of the RSV Bible. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven pillars. This here is the government of God. This is what Jesus did on the day of Pentecost. He set up the seven pillars, the, the sevenfold ministry of God, the spiritual blood covering of Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead. She has slaughtered her beasts. The victory of the cross. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. What this means is, is, is she mixed what, what, what Jesus Christ did is he mixed the bloodlines and he put them, all the sins, he put them all in the line of Judah from his mother's side, his earthly mother, mixed her wine, that's all the spirits, that is physical and spiritual. He took it all. And, and, uh, and then he... And then he has also set her table. That's the white throne judgment. That is the throne of God. That is the kingdom of God. So what he did here is when Jesus Christ was born, his chromosomes, half was of his mother, his earthly fleshly mother, to take on the sins of the entire creation uh, through those 23 chromosomes. He had to defeat sin. He was tempted, says in Hebrews. So that physical composition that was, that was in his physical body, he fought against that, and he never sinned. All the temptations. And uh, the devil was there. He claimed, uh, he, he claimed ownership over, over the body of Jesus also. He's claiming ownership over all the physical uh, things of the world, the bodies, because he has uh, his own... Uh, uh, um, uh, appearance there, also. Okay, um, he has he he has also his own uh, DNA is also there inside a physical body uh, that happened in the Garden of Eden. In verse three says, she has sent out her maids to call from the highest places in the town. These are the messenger winds, the prophets. Whoever is simple, let him turn here. To him who is without sense, says. She says, that's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, she says, through, through, through the messengers of God, the Holy Spirit working through the, 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 the messengers of God, uh, all in various degrees also. So we have to be able to distinguish between uh, what is of Jesus Christ coming out of the vessel, what is not of Jesus Christ. Some have more than others. Uh, to whom is without sense, she says, eat, come eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. This is dividing. This is division. Dividing, separation of the wheat and the tares, of the sheep and the goats. And in, in verse 6 says, Leave simpleness and live, and walk in the way of insight. The wine I have mixed. This also is to leave, is to go. It, he has drink of the wine I have mixed is the two covenants. Very important to understand. God is perfecting both the physical covenants in the creation that he made with Moses and the spiritual covenant that he made uh, through Jesus Christ. That is the everlasting covenant. So the physical blessings, he, he rules over all the physical blessings of the universe and he's ruling over the spiritual blessings of the universe. He conquered everything. Every single thing. He who corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse. John fifteen eighteen. Uh, that's uh, where uh, Jesus uh, was uh, being abused. John fifteen eighteen says here, "If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you." So this speaks regarding the messengers of God. And he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Uh, Mark 11, 18 is very ironic because of what happened after what Caiaphas said, uh, the, the high priest that year, says here in uh, Mark eleven eighteen, 18, 
And the chief priests and the scribes heard it and sought a way to destroy him, for they feared him because all the multitude was astonished at his teaching. So they, they wanted to destroy him because he was leading the people towards righteousness. And they do that today. That's the sign of Jonah. So when, when a person gets kicked out of a, an assembly because of the righteousness of God, if, this is, if, if it is of God, the righteousness thereof, that's a blessing. Uh, and what, it's like what Kai, and that's the sign of Jonah. The, 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 the Bible says you'll be kicked out. They'll kick you out of the synagogues because they don't want the truth. And that's, that's a separation. That is a sign between a, a true minister of God that doesn't, is not accepted in any way, shape, or form um, versus the way of the world. And what Caiaphas said uh, is also very edifying. He says, well, it's more expedient that one man die than the whole nation be destroyed. And, well, that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're getting rid of one person, right? Or two, you know, they're getting rid of all the ministers of God in order to keep their blessing so that the sea, you know, is, is, is nice and calm. And what's going to happen is they're going to be destroyed anyway. I mean, the disaster is going to come, just like what happened uh, with uh, with Jesus. They said, "Well, let's. It's better one man die for the nation that the, the whole nation not be destroyed." And in 70 A.D., the entire nation was destroyed and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. In verse um, eight, says, "Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you." This is a person uh, who, is, who has the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who accepts reproof and accepts correction, and is able to love the person who reproves them, who is able to uh, distinguish between good and evil. Okay, once again, original sin is uh, the knowledge of good and evil without the Holy Spirit. So walking in life, doing, uh, uh, having knowledge of good and evil, uh, and, and practicing that without the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. That is, that is sin every time that happens. So when we do not distinguish the truth and we act on, on, on the falsehoods, we are sinning. That's why we need Jesus Christ. We need His Holy Spirit. We desperately need more Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And, and that's what we're being judged on. In verse 9, uh, those are eternal implications. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will still be wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. You see? That's what we strive for, like the universe. We expand and grow like the universe. In verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. So it's a beginning process. We're babies. We're growing. We're learning. Uh, we have to stay with the instruction, no matter how difficult uh, or uh, things get spiritually, and uh, we we have to really rely on Jesus, uh, no matter how high, high or uh, the the waves are, are tossing. And uh, we have to stay with the Holy Spirit. We have to stay with our resolve, with what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. That's the most important thing: to be in the favor of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ continually. And verse 11 says, For by me your ways will be multiplied, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. Okay, Years added to your, your life is like, um, in those days, it was a sign of blessings. It was a sign of fruitfulness. It was a sign of... Um, and, and so these implications are spiritual. Uh, this means more added rewards. It's more... Uh, you know, the Bible says, uh, "He who humbles themselves will be exalted." It's, it's, it's exaltation. It's in the, in the glory of God. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you alone will bear it. A foolish man is that means when you're before God in judgment, you're by yourself. What you've done is between you and God. So this is why it's so important to have that relationship right now, so we're prepared. So we can exercise, so we can get to understand his, his, his voice, to, to be familiar with him now before we die. So we're, we're, we've already done it. Uh, we've already been through the program of God. That's the only reason why we're alive, is to give God the answer and to make our way uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in consecration, in sanctification, prepared in readiness uh, to reign in the universe, because anything that mixes 
with the devil will never reign in the universe. It won't reign. It's going to be wiped out. So if you're mixing anything in the temple of God, um, it has to be exposed. The light has to be there. The darkness has to go. That's just the way, that's the reality of God. God is 100% holy. He's not compromising or messing around with it anymore. He used to live in the darkness in the first covenant. He was ministering to it. And now, after the murder of Jesus Christ, his son, he said, that's it. Get it now. Uh, I have nothing to do with darkness anymore. The, the Bible says in the New, New Testament, the New Covenant says, what does darkness have to do with the light? What does the temple of God have to do with, uh, with the idols? You know, what does light have to do with darkness? What does the temple of God have to do with Belial? So, uh, we must... We, we, we must understand the difference. And the Holy Spirit showed me that now is that we have to fight against evil. It's extremely, it's very critically important that we have to fight against evil, the evil spirits, for our own survival with God. We have to find the, um, the favor of God, not the favor of men. A foolish woman is noisy. Now this here, if you look at verse 3 and 4, this is the opposite. So you have the ministers of Jesus Christ, verses 3 to, 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 to 6 and 7. Okay, the, the, verses 3 and 4 and 5 says, that Whoever is simple, let him turn here. So the messengers of God, they're calling the people to eat the food that is that that is being sown through them through the Holy Spirit, and here, in verse thirteen, says a foolish woman is noisy. So what this is, this is um, the children of the light. This is the children of the darkness. The spirit of, this, of Satan, the devil, and it's also world religion. It's fake world religion. It's it has an appearance of being of having some wisdom. Uh, however, it is an imitation, and it's of the devil. We have to know the difference. That's the test. And we have to minister to it accordingly through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Uh, we don't always use a, a, a canon. Uh, sometimes it's, we have to be more subtle with it. However, it has to know. And the, the listeners have to know. The viewers have to know. Everyone has to know what is happening. They, they have to be able to clue in. We do that through the love of God, for the love of the souls that are listening. We love the souls that are listening. We love the souls. We need to get the souls to understand, to see the difference. And what it's a great way to practice our faith. It's a great way to minister. We must have wisdom, wisdom from Jesus Christ. And that comes with a clean temple, from knowing the truth. Now, in verse 13 it says, she sits at the door. So this is an imitation. A foolish woman is noisy. She is wanton and knows no shame. She sits at the door of her house. Okay, that's that's her her uh, her fleshly desires. She takes a seat on the high places of the town, calling to those who pass by, who are going straight on their way. And these are the unlearned. Whoever is simple, they're going straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. So they're going straight on their way. So they're just in their their own way. They're unexpecting. You know, they're 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 just like a deer in the headlights. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And to him who is without sense, she says. Stolen water is sweet. This is twisted doctrine. This is the spirit of the devil. And bread eaten in secret is pleasant. These are whisperings. You see? Small little whisperings in the rhetoric, in the in in in, in the in the uh, in the doctrine. But he does not know that the dead are there. Unsuspecting people listening, they don't know. 
that her guests are in the depths of hell. God is serious. He, he, he is extremely serious because of the murder of his son. He's not fooling around. He's, gonna, he's unleashing the devil. He is unleashing the wrath of the devil right now. It's merciless. And this is for our own good. It's for our, this is for our own survival. I hope you're edified. Jesus loves you. Jesus is Lord. Jesus hates sin. Sin will not enter the kingdom of God. It will not enter. It will be burned with holy fire. It will be burned forever in the lake of fire. After the judgment, there is a judgment. And we must be ready right now. In Jesus' name, amen.